everybody. Welcome back to the Sanctum. Well, October is finally here, and that means it's time to look at costumes again. So I'm dragging out masks and boxes of costumes to showcase in these days up to Halloween. We're going to see Collegeville. We're going to see Ben Cooper. We're going to see Halco and others. And, as you can see by this mask here before us of the one and only Fonz, this episode, we're going to be taking a look at some of the cool celebrities and characters from my favorite era, the 1970s. So click on those lava lamps, stretch your feet out on that shag carpet, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode I'd like to call 70s Superstar Celebrity Costume Showcase. Now move it in, move it round, disco baby. Now, as you can see by that mask there, we've got Arthur Fonzarelli, played by the one and only Henry Winkler. And there was no bigger star on TV than the Fonz. He had his own action figure. He was everywhere. He was huge. Now, sadly, I do not have a Fonzie or the Fonz costume. But I do have this really cool Fonz mask. It came in a lot that I purchased, and it's in pretty good shape. It's a, it's a cool mask, and the, the Fonz costume was cool, and perhaps one day I shall own one, but for the time being, I just have this cool Fonzie mask that I can display. It kind of looks like Fonzarelli. It could also be John Travolta, I guess, too, if you really wanted it to be. He's got the sideburns and the greaser do with the duck butt there. And this one has... The rubber band, which a lot of these masks don't. I will. So we've got the Fonz here to bring us into the 70s. What celebrity are we going to see first, Fonzie? Look into Fonzie's eyes. Look deep into Fonzie's eyes. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Farrah Fawcett? Farrah Fawcett was huge in the 1970s, and she was well known to me. Not because of the iconic picture where she appeared in the red bathing suit, which to this day is still one of the best-selling posters of all time, but I knew her because she was in Logan's Run, and she was also married to the $6 million man. How much cooler can you get? Oh, and I think she starred in a little TV show called Charlie's Angel. Sarah Fawcett, one of the biggest icons of the 1970s, and our little costume company, Collegeville, nailed that IP license. And in typical Collegeville fashion, here we have the box, which is your standard Collegeville costume box, and they had a habit of doing this quite a bit. They would just slap this little bumper sticker slash, uh, I don't know, decal on the front, and it says Farrah Fawcett. And they've got a nice little illustration of her there and it's it's Farrah Fawcett Industries or Farrah Fawcett copyright 1977 and we've got all the typical trappings of the costume Farrah Fawcett written on the box there medium eight to ten years old for some reason again like medium costumes are out there they were the ones that were saved all you medium-sized children thank you for your parents for saving these costumes so that I can collect them to this day and you get your standard cat and witch and a little bit of water damage there and of course we've got those great price tags this was from lionel for 298 now what's interesting about this and what probably wasn't so great for collegeville when they grabbed the license is it's called farrah fawcett it's not charlie's angels and everybody knew farrah fawcett back then for charlie's angels which surprisingly she was only on the show for one season, but she had all these iconic moments in the 70s. I mean, she was married to the $6 million man. That's, that's where she hit my sweet spot. She was married to the $6 million man, and she starred in the movie Logan's Run. Well, not really starred, but she had a part in the movie Logan's Run. And of course, she had that best-selling poster of her in the red bathing suit that you saw everywhere in the 70s. And to this day, that is still one of the number one selling posters of all time. Now, me personally, I did not have that Farrah Fawcett poster on my wall. Uh, as a kid, I was a bit too young for, for pinups when that was out. Uh, as I got older, if you, if you want to talk uh, blondes and Lee Majors, I was quite a Heather Thomas fan when I got Oh, this is creepy. Now, Farrah Fawcett was on Charlie's Angels, as I said. That was her big hit, and she was on that for the 1976 season. 
This is copyrighted 1977. So I'm guessing some guy at Collegeville went out for uh, to grab some IP licenses and he nabbed the Farrah Fawcett license thinking he was going to get Charlie's Angels. Then she had her contract disputes and left the show and they got stuck with a Farrah Fawcett costume, which isn't bad. Like I said, she was huge in the 70s. And this is a pretty cool costume. I'll take it out of the box here. The mask is pristine. It's in really great shape. And again, I, I, I kind of dig the Collegeville costumes. They grabbed sort of different IP licenses, and the style of their masks was a little bit different from Ben Cooper. Now, this one's still got the, the rubber band on it, which is amazing, because as anyone who collects these things know, or that wore them, that rubber band is usually gone by the end of the night. And uh, every once in a while when I get these, I, I put them on, and of course my big fat head snaps the rubber bands. But that mask is in great condition. So here's our costume. It's a combination of rayon and vinyl. The back is made of in vinyl, and the front is sort of a rayon dress. And if this dress doesn't scream 70s, I don't know what does. It's mud brown and red. Ab about as drab and plain as you can get when you're trying to be one of the era's most iconic sex symbols. Uh, it's sort of got this red wrap across the chest, and it's got her name. In, in typical 70s Ben Cooper Collegeville costume fashion, you've got the name of the character right there, Farrah Fawcett. And then over on the other side of the chest, you've got Farrah Fawcett's face. And of course, she's wearing this lovely, she's got this plunging neckline, I guess, of a dress here that she's wearing. And she's wearing this lovely heart pendant slash locket. Perhaps the there's a photo of, of Lee Majors in there. Was Farrah Fawcett known to wear a, a locket? And of course, you've got, you know, that, that illustration of her face right there. It's very wrinkled. Uh, I tried to stuff the costume as best I could so that the the words and the illustration would spread out, but it's been stuffed in a box for God knows how many years. You can see there's some holes along the waistline there. And that's the problem I seem to find with a lot of these older rayon costumes. And depending on what part of the country I buy it from or where I get it from, they tend to dry out and start to crumble and fall apart. So I've got to do some research into costume restoration, see if I can and salvage any of these. I mean, I know there's no way to repair them, but maybe figure out a way to stop the dry rot process on some of these or maybe make the fabric a bit more supple. So again, you've got this, this lovely pattern on the bottom of the dress, so the skirt portion of the dress. Something you might see on the wallpaper in a, a pewter pot or mug and muffin restaurant. <laughs> it, it's very 70s. They, they really went all out here with like, just make it brown, Charlie. Brown and flower print. And we'll throw Farrah Fawcett's name on the thing and that's it. Call it a day. Now after the 1970s, Farrah Fawcett went on to have quite a career for herself. She wound up starring in the awesome film Cannonball Run. She divorced Lee Majors and married Ryan O'Neill. I don't know how well that worked out. And she went on to become quite a serious actress, starring in The Burning Bed and Extremities and a slew of made-for-TV movies. Sadly, she died very young, uh, far too young in her early 60s. And a lot of people remember her for some of her sort of disorientating talk show appearances, which a lot probably had to do with the fact that she was on quite a few drugs and medications for the cancer that she was fighting at the time. And boy, was that a bummer of... <laughs> Who wrote this copy? Who's making this up? That was a real bummer of a way to uh, help celebrate Halloween. But anyhow, in the 70s, she was fresh-faced, she was sexy, she was popular. There was no bigger superstar than Farrah Fawcett. And the 1970s was her shining moment. Charlie's Angel Indeed. Who do we have next, Magic Fonzie Mask? Look into Fonzie's eyes, deep into his hollow, dead eyes. Who is coming to us from the 70s? Why, we've gone from an angel to a devil. A daredevil. Evil Knievel. 
Evil Knievel was one of the most badass icons to come out of the 1970s. He was a stuntman that jumped over everything from cars to buses to fountains to shark tanks. He even tried to jump over the Grand Canyon. Well, he didn't actually try. The government wouldn't let him. So he did the next best thing. He jumped over Snake River Canyon. And not on a motorcycle. He did it in a homemade rocket ship. And he made it. Well, technically. He got to the other side, and then the parachute deployed to slow him down. The wind caught it and dragged him all the way over the canyon again, back to the other side of the river where he started from. So technically, I guess he jumped it and then jumped back again. Evil Knievel was so popular that there was an industry of churning out Evil Knievel properties. He had his own toy line from Ideal that consisted of motorcycles, action figures, stunt vans, and one of the coolest play sets that I never had, the Skull Canyon jump set. And I love that because it combined two things that were iconic from the 70s, Evil Knievel and Bigfoot. Well, technically, I don't know if it was Bigfoot. Sometimes they call him the Yeti. And in some sets, the monster that comes with it is brown, like Bigfoot. And in other sets, it's white, like the Yeti. But evil Knievel, escape from Skull Canyon. Pretend the hairy monster has evil trapped in Skull Canyon. And evil's going to try and jump out. But there's a log across the road. Oh, just missed. Now you'll have to make evil crash through the boulders blocking the passage. You've done it. Evil triumphs again. Evil Knievel Escape from Skull Canyon figure, winder, and stunt cycle sold separately from Ideal. And what we've got here before us is the Ben Cooper Evil Knievel Halloween costume. In the Evil Knievel box. This is a harder costume to come by. They're out there, but they're tough to find. They're tough to find complete. And they're tough to find in a really good box. And this is a really nice example of this costume. Now, as I've talked about before, Ben Cooper had a variety of different boxes that their costumes came in. There are so many variants out there, and I'm still finding new variants to this day as I collect things. And what we've got here before us is a really nice example of this costume and box. This box is in great condition. It's got some fantastic graphics on it. You've got Evil Knievel there sort of jumping out right towards us uh, in, a, in a cutout off of the cellophane there. You've got the old stars and stripes that were always a part of his uniform. You've got the lines down below with the starbursts. And of course, we've got it labeled Evil Knievel, King of the Stuntmen, 1974 Evil Knievel. So again, another one that is copyrighted by the celebrity themselves. Farrah Fawcett was copyrighted Farrah Fawcett and Evil Knievel is copyrighted Evil Knievel. This one's a large. Uh, normally I get mediums, but this is very neat. 1974, the height of the 70s, right before the bicentennial when, you know, so that's why Evil Knievel is again all stars and stripes in Americana. These are great graphics on the side here, him sort of doing a, a wheelie as the stars and stripes blow out of his tailpipe. And then you've got those starbursts surrounding the Ben Cooper logo. Same thing on the back and the same graphics on the side here. box is in great condition. Not a lot of dings on it, no moisture damage. The cellophane is fully intact. The cellophane is almost always blown out of any costume I buy. And of course, we've got that patina I like so much. I, I have people telling me that I, I mentioned patina a lot, but I do enjoy it. $3.99. So three ninety nine in 1979 or 1974. Isn't that cheap? Let's take the costume out here. Ah, uh, and here we've got the mask. And really nice condition. It's got a, a little crack up at the top there, but not too bad. We've got uh, Evil's trademark stripes and stars. His name, Evil. And again, this is something they would they would repurpose their paint jobs and their masks quite often. This is clearly the NASA astronaut mask. It's been repurposed and repainted. They use that for a lot of things. Astro spook, astronaut, space vampire, space clown, space goof. 
They even did a Space 1999 costume of Commander Koenig in that. There was an ARC-2 costume, I believe, that did a similar job as well. And I believe if you take a look back at our Big Jim episode, this may have been used to make the Big Jim costume. Certainly the paint job on the side of the helmet there. Really nice sheen on the paint. Really nice. There's a little bit of a stain there, a scuff. And this is a bit of a different... These vacuform masks I'm finding out, they use different types of, of vinyl or plastic on them. This one's more of a softer one. And if some of the rack masks or some of the masks in later costumes were of a harder plastic. And you've got the rubber band there. Now, the rubber band was broken. I, I taped it to the side there so that I could display it. But really nice. And the curious thing about this, well, looks like the kid that wore this was, was eating a lot of chocolate that night or, or breathing chocolate into the mask. This one doesn't have a slit in the mouth like most of them do. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the inside of this mask was, was just slobbered with saliva. It's a classic 70s style Ben Cooper costume. Combination of rayon and vinyl. Rayon sleeves and pants and a vinyl chest. And this is one of the rarer Ben Cooper costumes that actually depicts what the character would be wearing and not a depiction of the character themselves on the costume. Although it would be kind of cool to have an Evil Knievel costume with a picture of Evil Knievel, you know, jumping over a, a line of buses or, or doing a wheelie on his motorcycle. But this is Evil Knievel's trademark stunt suit slash jumpsuit. You've got the V-neck collar there with the stars, the star belt, and the big belt buckle with the initials E-K, which stand for Evil Knievel. He's got kind of no neck right now because uh, that's the best way I could hang the mask on the hanger there, so he's kind of a no-neck evil. And there's a little bit of uh, piping around the ends of the sleeves there. You can see blue vinyl to sort of give it a little bit of uh, pizzazz, you know, to add to the showmanship of Evil Knievel. The only thing they should have sold as an accessory to this is his little cape that he used to wear and his, I don't know if it was a cane or a billy club or whatever, he sort of had this uh, this this wand, the evil Knievel cane that he, that he traveled around with as well to just give it a, a bit more flash. Now, Evil Knievel was also done as a play suit by Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper made uh, play suits as well that were a little bit sturdier, a little bit different. They did Batman, Superman, a couple of the Planet of the Apes, uh, Six Million Dollar Man, Evil Knievel, amongst others. But this is, is very cool, very 70s. It's in great shape. It's got a few stains, uh, a couple of tears on the back, but that's to be expected for a, a costume of this age. The mask is in perfect shape, like we've already discussed. And this was quite a popular costume back in the 70s. There were lots of kids wearing this. I remember seeing... Uh, a lot of kids at school in this and a lot of kids out trick-or-treating in this back in the day. Probably was a, a good solid costume for quite a few years for Ben Cooper. It wasn't just a, a one-and-done seasonal thing. When I helped design my line of AMF Roadmaster wheels, I said make them red, white, and blue to bear my name, Evil Knievel. You can see they're built solid, flashy, and hip, and the bikes come with these safety tips that bear my name, Evil Knievel. So if your kids are thrilled, I know just how they feel. These wheels are real exciting and bear my name, Evil Knievel. Evil Knievel remained popular for the remainder of the 1970s. There were two films based on his life, one starring George Hamilton and the other starring Evil himself. But as we moved into the 80s and 90s, Evil's star started to fade. He grew old and injured and was unable to perform many of the stunts for which he was well known. He also had some run-ins with the law and the court system. His son, Robbie Knievel, became a stunt rider and performed some of Evil's old stunts, jumping the fountain at Caesar's Palace, and he even cemented the family's legacy by finally jumping the Grand Canyon. But whatever troubles may have visited Evil later on in life, there are those of us that grew up in the 1970s that remember a time. A time when we spent many a sunny Saturday afternoon setting up plywood ramps, trying to jump our bicycles over matchbox cars or our friends, landing wrong on the cement and smashing our testicles on the banana seat. We remember a time 
A time in the 70s when, to paraphrase the announcer of the Skull Canyon playset, we remember a time when evil was triumphant. Oh, magical and mysterious Arthur Fonzarelli mask. What wondrous celebrities are you bringing back from the past for us to view next? Who shall it be? Who shall grace our YouTube screens? Why, it's that other Gary Marshall produced sitcom. And we've got a double whammy. Laverne and Shirley. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Schlemiel, Schlemazel, Haas and Vamp Incorporated. Now, Laverne and Shirley first appeared on an episode of Happy Days. They played a couple of easy dates for the Fonz and Richie. The Fonz refers to them as a couple of girls who have dated the fleet. The characters proved so popular that they decided to develop a pilot for them. Now, in the pilot, initially, Cindy Williams did not want to come back and play Shirley. So Liberty Williams, who was of no relation, came in to shoot the pilot only as Shirley. Now, Liberty Williams, to all you Super Friends fans, is known as the voice of Jaina the Wonder Twin. But somehow they were able to convince Cindy Williams to come back. She did shoot an episode of the pilot, and the series went forward. And I'm going to go on record here and say that Laverne and Shirley is the better show. I always preferred Laverne and Shirley to Happy Days. I, I can remember watching it growing up and my mom laughing hysterically at this show. She loved it, and we loved watching it and couldn't wait for it to be on week after week. It has a great cast, with Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams as the leads. They have great chemistry together. The ensemble gels together real well. They've got a lot of physical comedy, a lot of musical bits, and they've got a secret weapon. Hello. 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 Lenny and Squiggy, as played by David Lander and Michael McKean. These two characters are hilarious. They were first created by Landers and McKean in college, and then they were brought to be on the Laverne and Shirley show. The show proved extremely popular in the 1970s. As a matter of fact, they cut two albums. Laverne and Shirley cut an album singing as their characters, and Lenny and Squiggy cut an album, Lenny and the Squigtones, singing as their characters. And, full disclosure, I own them both. And the ensemble rounded out with Laverne's father, who ran a pizza shop, their landlady, and of course, local New England boy Eddie Mecca as Carmine Ragusa, or as he's more commonly known, the Big Ragu. So we'll take a look at Laverne here first. Got your standard Collegeville box. This is Collegeville TV Comics costume with mask. And it's just sort of these weird generic, of course, you know, these colors are about as 70s as you can get. Black, yellow, and pink. Looks like, you know, a, a block from the Partridge family. The cellophane's blown out on the circle there. And then we've got, okay, Laverne. Now look what they did here. It says Laverne from Happy Days television series. Laverne and Shirley. So I don't know if that was a, a copyright thing that they had to say that it was sort of a part of the Happy Days family, or it was Collegeville trying to say, like, look, look, I, you, maybe you don't like Laverne and Shirley, but they, they, they were on Happy Days. This is a Happy Days costume. So, so, yeah, it's still Laverne from the Happy Days television series, Laverne and Shirley. So they're trying to put this into the, the 
Happy Days Universe. And then you've got the Paramount Pictures license there as well. And this is a small. And we've got the price tag there. It was on originally being sold for $349. And then it went on sale for $175. And then we've got Shirley next. Played by the great Cindy Williams. Uh, I, I often jumped between uh, being a Shirley fan to a Laverne fan and back again. Uh, I think I prefer Shirley now just because Cindy Williams was so great in American Graffiti. And they were both terrific. They were both really terrific actresses on that show. Shirley from the Happy Days television show again. And this is a large. And it does kind of look like Cindy Williams there. This one's got... Well, actually, I think that's just a plastic bag in there. And this one was sold. Here's that great patina. At Murphy's. For two fifty-seven, dollars was Murphy's, a, a department store? It sounds like a bar. Come down to Murph's. And this is what I really like. Katrina Lesher. This costume belonged to a Katrina Lesher. I always wonder if somebody is watching this episode at some point and they see their name here. If you are, please contact me and, and tell me about your experiences with this costume. How did this get saved? How did it get sold? How did it make its way to me? Sure, Katrina Lesher is at home right now. Like, hmm, this, this YouTube seems interesting. Lots of videos to watch here. Let me just peruse through. Oh, look, here's a middle-aged man talking about costumes. Why, heavens to Betsy. That's a Laverne and Shirley. Boy, I remember being Shirley in my youth. Why, why, that's my name. He's talking about me. Uh, I'd better get into this comment section right away and write a, a, a touching tale about how I wore this Shirley costume. Hold on, Dr. Durant. So let's take a look at the masks here. First, we have uh, Shirley Feeney, played by the great Cindy Williams, as we've already mentioned. Now, uh, her character was sort of the prim and proper one on the show. She was a bit more innocent. Uh, she slept with her stuffed cat called Boo Boo Kitty. And she had an on-again, off-again relationship with the big ragu, Carmine Ragusa. And this kind of looks like Cindy Williams. We're going to have to say they kind of did get that, that Cindy Williams vibe, which is what all the ladies were looking for back in the 1970s, weren't they? You, you wanted that Cindy Williams vibe. And this one's got the rubber band on it. And again, I love these, that the kids wrote their names on these. Probably because they went to school, right? They had, they had a costume parade at school, so they had their name on it. Katrina L. It'd be awesome if, if Katrina contacted me about owning this costume. And no slit in the mouth for breathing, so just through the nose. <laughs> That's it. Again, you'd, you'd be slobbering like crazy on that thing. And here's our Laverne mask, played by the great Penny Marshall, who was the producer Gary Marshall's sister. Penny Marshall first appeared, uh, to me at least, as the secretary on the Odd Couple TV show. And she was hilarious on that. And she's really funny in Laverne and Shirley as well. This mask didn't fare so well. Uh, it's got a dent on the head there, like probably from being smashed inside the box. Got a couple of chips there, but that's quite common on these. But this one still has the rubber band. Pretty clean on the inside. Now, I've heard uh, one of the ways to sort of work these out is to put a, a hairdryer on very low heat and try and sort of work it back into shape. I'm not sure. This is, this is very stiff vacuum form material. And then you're supposedly supposed to run it under cold water so it doesn't go back into that shape. I'm going to have to find some junk masks and try it. This one's got a bit of a more sheen on it, you can see. Different paint job. So here we have the girls here, Laverne and Shirley. Your typical Collegeville 70s costume. You've got the vinyl back with the rayon front. It's done as a dress, a skirt, no sleeves. And you've got these great illustrations of Laverne and Shirley on the chest there. Really nice illustrations of Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams. And the great Laverne and Shirley font, sort of a comedic font. And it has copyright 1977 Paramount Pictures. So this is right after the first season came out. First, it premiered in 1976, 
And, it was- and I wonder how successful this was for Collegeville. I often wonder, did you know, it's kind of one of those costumes that you have to go out as a pair. You have to go out as Laverne and Shirley. And if anybody out there did go out tandem as Laverne and Shirley with someone, please comment in the comment sections below. Suppose another thing you could do is buy two costumes and put one on forwards and one on backwards and walk up to the house as Laverne and turn around and you're Shirley heading away. That would be kind of cool too. Penny Marshall went on to be a big time director. Cindy Williams continued to act here and there. Dave Landers continued to do comedy and sadly passed away from multiple sclerosis a few years ago. And Michael McKean went on to be in This Is Spinal Tap, have a stint on Saturday Night Live, and he had a great starring role on Better Call Saul. But however the show ended up, it is still remembered to this day as one of the top sitcoms of the 1970s. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to go have a Pepsi and milk. Oh, magic Fonzie mask. Take us once more through the sands of time. What celebrity from the 1970s are you bringing us? Who is it? Who is it I see coming through the mist, coming through the fog? It's Muhammad Ali. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I saved the best for last. The greatest, if you will. It's the Muhammad Ali costume from Collegeville. Muhammad Ali was one of the greatest athletes and possibly one of the greatest boxers of all time. And he was huge in the 1970s. And he was appearing everywhere, not just in the ring. He was on TV, he was on variety shows, he was appearing in comic books, and he was even starring in his own Saturday morning cartoon. That's right, Muhammad Ali had his own Saturday morning cartoon. And this costume is a tie-in piece of merchandise to that cartoon. Now, some of the prior costumes we've seen from Collegeville were copyrighted to those particular celebrities. Farrah Fawcett was copyrighted Farrah Fawcett. It wasn't a Charlie's Angels costume. This is the opposite. This is a Muhammad Ali costume that isn't fashioned after Muhammad Ali, the celebrity. It is fashioned after Muhammad Ali, the cartoon character. Now, as you can see by the copyright on the Muhammad Ali sticker over there that Collegeville was so happy to slap on the box, this says copyright 1977 Farmhouse Films. Farmhouse Films was an independent production company run by Fred Calvert. The last cartoon he did prior to Muhammad Ali was Emergency 4, based on the Emergency TV series. You can guess how well that probably did as a cartoon. Now, he thought that Muhammad Ali's popularity with the kids would translate to the cartoon and make it a big hit. It wasn't. It lasted 13 episodes. It was Muhammad Ali voicing himself, and he would run around and have adventures with his niece and nephew. Now, reading some of the titles of some of the episodes, they do sound kind of cool. The Great Alligator, Volcano Island, The Werewolf at Devil's Creek, and Terror in the Deep. Those sound awesome, but I don't know if those are the types of adventures you want to see Muhammad Ali having. So somehow the guy that acquired licenses, the salesman that acquired licenses for Collegeville, nabbed this license for the Muhammad Ali cartoon. Collegeville was sort of the the runner-up to Ben Cooper. Ben Cooper was, was the big boy in town. They got all the big licenses, Marvel and DC and a lot of the big movie licenses. And Collegeville sort of picked up what it could. 
But that's what makes me love Collegeville, the types of licenses they acquired. And I always picture their salesman to be this disheveled William Wyndham type, you know, walking around like, hey, what'd you pick up today, Jerry? Oh, I got Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, he's huge. This is going to be bigger. This is Muhammad Ali based on a Saturday morning cartoon. Who's doing it? Hanna-Barbera? No. Filmation? No. Ruby Spears? Uh-uh. DePate Freeling? Never heard of him. W- who's doing it? Farmhouse Films. It's going to be huge. We're going to be carrying this costume for years to come. And this is very specific to the cartoon. When, when we pull the costume out here, you're going to see what I'm talking about. So what made it probably a failure or a disaster back in 1977 makes it a sought-after collector's piece right now because there was very little merchandise that tied into that 13-episode cartoon. And I do have fond memories of it. I do remember watching the cartoon. There wasn't a Saturday morning that I was implanted in front of the TV from about 6 a.m. till noon watching cartoons. And I remember this cartoon. And I would talk about it years later to people, and, and they would think I was out of my mind. There was like, there was never a cartoon based on Muhammad Ali. And I'm like, yes, there was. Problem was, because it only lasted 13 episodes, it never played again in syndication, and it didn't get much airing. But there are people that remember it fondly. As a matter of fact, the cartoon series The Mike Tyson Mysteries is a homage slash parody of the Muhammad Ali cartoon. Here we've got the standard Collegeville box. Again, Collegeville didn't have as many variations on the boxes as Ben Cooper did. They sort of just took their generic Halloween box and they slapped these stickers on it. Although I kind of like these these stickers now. They're, they're kind of growing on me because they, they have sort of a, you know, you're getting something special here in a way. And I like the neon orange in the stickers. You've got Muhammad Ali, 1977 Farmhouse Films. This one's nice. It's still got all the cellophane at attached. And you can see here, it's got the name Muhammad Ali, I Am The Greatest, subtitle. That was what the cartoon was called. 1977 Farmhouse Films. This is a large. And, you know, for a generic box, they're, they're, they're cool boxes. You know, you've got your, your standard black cat and witch flying across the moon. I do like the color schemes. They're, they're very 70s, that sort of neonish 70s orange and yellow and pink. And then we've got that patina that I like so much. $3.29 at Boscov's. Never heard of that place. Someone tell me who Boscov's is, where it is. We didn't have them up around here in New England. Let's bring the mask out. And like I said, you can see the mask there somewhat resembles Muhammad Ali, but what they're doing and what I actually think is really cool about this piece is that it is based on the cartoon version of Muhammad Ali. Very cartoony looking. I think Collegeville would repurpose this mask uh, later on down the line for some other characters. Again, I love these vacuform masks. Uh, you can see that he's dented at the top there on his top of his head. Again, most of these got dented from being pushed into the costume boxes when people stuff them in there. And again, they, they really were pushing this. This Farmhouse Films had its copyright on everything. 1977 Farmhouse Films. Got a couple of cracks along the chin there. Uh, another one with no mouth slit. And this is not the original rubber band. I, I sort of secured that on there so I can display the piece. But it's in good condition, other than the dent on the top. Now, this is a fantastic looking costume. It is in really great shape. I do not think that this has been worn before. There's no tears in it. There's no rips. There's no stains. There's nothing. Pretty sure this must have either been some old store stock or somebody bought it and just never wound up wearing it because it is in great shape. And it's a really nice costume. I, I, I love the costume and I love the artwork on the costume. 
And I love the color combinations they put together. You've got the red, the gold, and the black. It's got the black legs, which are made of rayon. It's got the red sleeves that are made of rayon. And you've got the vinyl chest piece. And of course, it's got that fantastic artwork on it. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. So again, this is one of those costumes where the costume shows the character themselves and has the name printed on it. And again, that was the name of the cartoon, Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. I mean, that was his catchphrase, I am the greatest. So why not use it? Really terrific looking costume. So as we probably said, uh, this only lasted one season, possibly because it was copyrighted to the cartoon show and not to Muhammad Ali himself. If it was copyrighted to Muhammad Ali, they probably could have carried the costume for several more Halloweens. But once the cartoon was canceled, that was probably the end of the costume as well. Which again, didn't work out well for Collegeville or Farmhouse Films back in the 70s, but it worked out well for me now because it's a nice collectible piece. You know what would be cool is if a kid dressed up in this and then another kid dressed up in the Ben Cooper Superman costume and they had a fight. That would be awesome. You know, they could recreate the scene from the DC Comics Treasury Edition of Muhammad Ali vs. Superman. This is a really special piece to have in my collection. It means a lot to me because it really ties into that 70s nostalgia that I like so much. And so this episode of Costumes has come to an end. Until next we meet in the Sanctum. Walk in beauty, my friends. Thank you.